Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Um, as you will have seen by the title, I will be talking about the books that I read in September and my October TBR. I didn't have a TBR for September, I just had more of a fall pile of possibilities, but there are several books that um, I've been planning almost all year to read in October and I have my book club book and then the book that I want to read for the October prompt of Chantel's Read Your Bookshelf Challenge. Um, so that's why I'm doing a TBR this month. But yeah, these are all books that I'm actually in the mood to read this month. And so that's why I am making a TBR this month. It's a mood reading TBR. But anyway, first, let's go over all of the books that I read in September. I only completed five books in September, which I feel like I've just kind of been in a bit of a slump. Even now, it's October 6th, and I haven't even completed a single book for this month yet either. So there's that. <laughs> but it's okay. Hopefully you're going to be able to change that soon but also October is just a full busy month for us so I have no idea how much reading I'll actually get done but anyway the first book that I finished in September was The Fox and I by Catherine Raven I rated this one three stars I believe let me check it's been a while clearly yes it was three stars um it just didn't uh, give what I wanted it to give, <laughs> but I still enjoyed it. So that's why I still got three stars. I enjoyed different aspects of the book. I loved all of the nature descriptions. I loved her, the way she wrote about um, the different animals and their relationships to each other and just nature, nature in general and how everything works together, the ebb and flow, of all of the different creatures and the the flora and the fauna, you know? Um, but her writing was a bit jumpy. Like, it felt like it would jump from topic to topic and there wasn't like a flowing pattern of the story of her and her relationship with the fox. So that's why it only got three stars. But I still enjoyed it for the most part. But I can understand if you're not like into like nature readings and things like that, you might find this book a little bit boring. There were a few parts that I just had to like push through as well. Um, and again, like I said, her writing is a little hard to follow sometimes because she's talking about one thing in this paragraph and jumping to something completely different in the next paragraph. And so it was a whole thing, but I still love the cover. And I love the idea of making friends with a wild fox through reading to the fox. She read um, The Little Prince um, that was like the main book that she would read to the fox, which is really fun, and I love that story. I have mentioned this book in several other videos and stuff, um, and it is a memoir. Clearly, it's been a while since I've done a wrap-up, so my apologies if I am not describing these books very well. <laughs> but um, the next one then that I picked up was The Bookshop by Penelope Fitzgerald. This one was fun. Um, I also love the cover. It's short and sweet and a very um, interesting story with interesting characters. Um, we follow Florence Green. She's a widow um, with a small inheritance and she opens up a bookshop in this little town. On a, um, It's a seaside town of Hardborough. It's the only bookshop in town. Um, it's kind of like a town where the people don't really like new things if they haven't already had if it's something that wasn't already in the town they don't really want it because they want things to kind of stay the same um, the building that she purchased to open this bookshop in there's um, another lady in town I'm trying to think she I feel like she's kind of like the top one of the top people in this town that kind of like runs things and stuff, but she wanted that building um, for herself to open up like an arts, 
art display, art center type of thing. Um, and so yes, it's, it's just following Penelope trying to get this bookshop up and running and the different characters and things like that and other people in this town hoping that it doesn't work out and that she'll have to just like close down the bookshop because to them that's the most practical thing to do like why would you open up a bookshop it's not practical <laughs> um she said like the last line of the synopsis here on the back says only too late does she begin to suspect the truth a town that lacks a bookshop isn't always a town that wants one so it was less bookish than I thought it was going to be based on the title because it is called The Bookshop but it's more about the characters in this town and their relationships with um, with Florence and her struggles with trying to get this bookshop open but I did enjoy it. The writing was a little bit of something to get used to but I enjoyed it enough that I do want to pick up more of Penelope Fitzgerald's books because it was just interesting and did I mention it? I think, yeah, I rated it four stars just because I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was really fun and the characters made me laugh. It's mentioned in the foreword that the last line of the book is probably one of the saddest lines, last lines in a book that you will read. I don't know if that's really a spoiler, but I agree with the statement that it is, it's kind of sad. So it's not like it all ends with um all the happy feels but it was still good and it's still it was still interesting and yeah i would actually recommend it um it has a bit of a classical feel to it even though it was printed in the 70s so late 70s but anyway that is the bookshop by penelope fitzgerald Okay, so then the next one that I picked up, you would have seen this in most of these books, actually, in a vlog that I did last month. Um, I'll have it linked down below or in the cards up here. Um, but I picked up Promise Me This by Kathy Go Golk. I have no idea. I really need to look up how to say her last name because I do not know. But... Um, this is a historical fiction book. The reason I, it caught my interest was because it kind of centers around the Titanic and the tragedy of everything that happened um, over that time. But it wasn't as heavy on the like historical aspect as I thought it would be um, because the Titanic, everything, the Titanic sinking and everything surrounding those events kind of happens in the beginning and this is more of a character driven story I feel um, but I absolutely loved 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 the characters I read this book very quickly um, because I couldn't put it down um, we follow Annie um, and she watches her brother Owen leave on the Titanic because he's going to America to try to build a better life for himself and Annie, his sister, um, and get them away from their aunt who is kind of their caretaker but she is very cruel and unloving and just a very bitter woman. It's Her story is really sad actually. Um, just like the darkness that is in her. <laughs> um, but Owen leaves on the Titanic to go to America obviously to work with his aunt and uncle who live there already um, as a gardener. He wants to, he wants to, um, start like a farm, a rose garden type of thing in America, um, because he's really passionate about gardening. On the Titanic, Owen has become friends with a stowaway, basically. He knew him a little bit before they left on the Titanic, but Michael, the young boy, had stowed away on the Titanic and Owen just like felt a calling to like take this boy under his wings and help him out and all of that stuff. And so when the Titanic was sinking, this all happens in the very beginning, um, so I don't think it's a spoiler, but Owen basically sacrifices his life for Michael um, and Michael goes to America to Owen's aunt and uncle's farm and decides to take on Owen's dream of starting this farm and like the ultimate goal is getting Annie 
away from their aunt in England and bringing her over to America. And so he starts writing letters back and forth to Annie. Annie at first despises Michael because she blames him for Owen's death. The story spans several years. So it starts out with um, Annie being like 15 years old. Annie and Michael are around the same age. And it goes through several years on into the First World War. And, and over this time, they are writing letters and you just follow Annie's journey um, and character development of uh, dealing with so much anger because her brother died and having to live with her aunt and her manip manipulative ways, things like that. And then World War I starts right around the time that she's about to come over to America and she disappears. And so Michael, at this point, decides to go back over to England to try to find her. And yeah, it's just their whole story. Um, and I, I really loved it. It was so much fun. Um, I did rate it four stars because like towards like the, like 75% of the way through, it did feel like the story started to drag just a little bit. And like, it just kept things being added in to like prolong their separation. Um, and finally like meeting again and finding each other again, all of that stuff. But overall, I really, really enjoyed this story. It was really sweet. Again, I loved the characters. Owen was the sweetest older brother and, and how much he cared for um, Annie and like his relationship with God and Jesus and like um, just his heart to like take Michael under his wing, all of those things. I, I really enjoyed the characters so much and just following their story. And the ending was very satisfying, I would say. Um, but yes, there's that one. I would actually, I would really highly recommend this one. It was a very beautiful story. That was my first book that I read by that author and I would love to pick up some more because it sound, I mean, if her other books are this well written, I think I would enjoy them. Um, the next one then that I picked up was Rainbow Valley. This is the seventh book in the Anne of Green Gable series. And again, five stars. I'm pretty sure I've rated, I've rated every book in this series five stars. All for their own different reasons because while I loved some books more than others, <laughs> I still just love Ella Montgomery's writing. Like you just, and her characters. You just can't beat her characters. I just, I, I just love it, love it so, so much. And I'm really sad that I'm getting down to the last of this series because this is my first time reading through the entire series in my lifetime. <laughs> and so I only have one more book to read, um, which is a little sad, but I'm really, really enjoying it. And I'm, yeah, these are treasures for sure. And I'm very grateful <laughs> that Ella Montgomery blessed us with Anne and her world. Um, and the final book that I read in September is The Secret Book of Flora Lee. It was, I borrowed it from the library, so I don't have a physical copy, so, you know, here's the cover. Um, but this was our book club pick of the month, and, um, yeah, this book. I really, really enjoyed it. I did not give it a rating on Goodreads as of yet, I don't think, um, because I was still pondering it a little bit. Um... And I'll explain a little bit of my ratings and all of that later. So um, the story centers around two sisters, um, Hazel and Flora, and um, it's a dual timeline. So like the one timeline is set back during the beginning of World War II and how Hazel and Flora had to be sent away from London when they, they shipped out millions of children away because of the bombings and um, they were just all sent to other homes to live in and um, Hazel is 14 at the time I believe and then Flora is around seven I believe I can't remember the exact age difference but they are sent away and Flora happens to go missing one day and most people believed that she drowned in the river um, because her body was never found. She was just never, she, she was never discovered. Um, but Hazel and her mom always held on to the belief that she was alive somewhere, but 
they didn't know if that was just something that they were just hoping for or if it was true because they obviously had nothing to go on but then the second timeline is um later in the 60s i believe 50s 60s after the war um hazel is working in a old bookshop where like rare treasures <laughs> um are sold and um it was one day at work she receives this package that she has to open up and it's um original illustrations and a storybook um of a world that she created and she only ever told the story to her sister flora who had disappeared all those years ago and she's just like wait a minute how was the story written down she had never told anyone else what is going on i got chills just thinking about it because can you imagine a little secret imaginary world fairy tale that you created with your sibling and the sibling disappears and you and is believed dead for so long and many years later you find a storybook a children's storybook <laughs> about the story that you two created whoa anyway so obviously that sends her on a journey of just trying to figure out what happened to flora if she was actually alive or not and how the author of this book came to own this story and like who where she would have heard it from all of that stuff so i just found that entire concept fascinating and it was just a beautiful story overall um as far as like the actual ratings i would rate the whole story four stars because I really enjoyed it. I loved that aspect of the mystery of trying to discover if Flora was still alive um, and like all of the bookish things, you know? And there is also a bit of a romance happening. Um, in the story, but I didn't really love <laughs> that subplot. I did, but I didn't. But I don't know how much I can talk about it without spoiling some things, you know? So, there is that. But, as far as recommending it, I, like I said, I enjoyed it. I rated it four stars. It was a beautiful story. The plot twist at the end is something I did not see coming, and I was shook. <laughs> um, but, as far as recommend recommending it. I know that I have uh, young readers who follow my channel, um, like my sister and her friends and everyone else. I don't know that I would recommend it to anyone younger than 18, at least, <laughs> because of some content um, in the book. Uh, this is obviously a secular book and um, Hazel lives with her boyfriend and just other things there is like one tiny brief little scene bedroom scene it's not really described but it is it's i don't know how to explain it but basically i just wouldn't recommend it for the younger readers There's also some language i think i only remember seeing one or two of the f-bombs um but then there's other like language as well dispersed throughout the book but yeah Overall, I really did enjoy the story, but again, I would only recommend it to um, more mature readers. Um, but yes, that is The Secret Book of Flora Lee. I really, I did actually really enjoy the story. I, it was a fun, interesting read. On to what I hope to get to in October. Some of these books are books that I have already talked about in my fall pile of possibilities, um, but there were a few others that I picked out um, that I wanted to read this month. Um, and again, like these are the ones that I'm wanting, wanting to focus on the most, like these are top priority this month, but I still do plan to or hope to get to some of the other books that are on my fall pile of possibilities like I haven't even started the Chronicles of Narnia series yet and I really want to get to those this fall and even if it goes into the winter it's fine I think it would it also fits with the winter feels as well um I only have three other books 
mm, more like two other books on my pile of possibilities that I want to get to yet besides the Chronicles of Narnia series and um, the Sherlock Holmes collection. But um, the first one, we'll just start with the stack that I have here. There's no really p particular order. But the first one that I want to read this month that I've just been so in the mood for <laughs> is a reread of Little Women. This is the edition that I picked up um, just for rereading. I have an older book that was printed in the 80s, but I don't want to handle it too much because it is very fragile, very old, and I don't want it ruined, but I think it's just so beautiful that I wanted to own it. Um, and I have two other books of Louisa May Alcott's um, in that edition, but this is just one um, a paperback edition from pa from the Puffin Classics that I just picked up um, to be able to read whenever I want and even loan it out to people. Um, so that is the first one. I am really excited to get back into the story and I've just been craving the world of li Little Women um, the last little while. And the next one, this is one that I did start, did I start it this month? Yes, I did. Um, but it is Sailing Around the Room, a collection of poems by Billy Collins. Um, I mentioned, I think, yeah, in August, I mentioned that I had read one of his other books. Um, and that he, that Billy Collins is quickly becoming one of my favorite um, poets. And it's still true. Like I said, I did start this one already and I have several um, poems marked that were my favorite. Uh, I haven't loved every single one of them in this book so far, but there have been a few that I've just really adored. And this was not on my fall pile of possibilities, but I want, like I said, like I've been saying, I want to get more into poetry and I just feel like poetry also just fits this time of year as well for some reason. I don't, I don't know, the, I can't explain the logic behind that in my brain, but yes, this is another one that I'm wanting to get through this month. And I thought the cover also kind of has fallish feels, you know? Okay, and so the next one is the book that I will be reading for Chantel's Read Your Bookshelf Challenge. So the prompt for this month is the first letter of author's last name is the first letter of the title. So the way she has it set up this year if you aren't aware of it, um, is that it go the book that we read every month goes off of something from the previous book that we read. And so the book that I had read for September was, goodness, Promise Me This by Kathy Golk. And so the first letter of her last name is a G. And so I needed to find a book with the first letter of the title being a G. And I actually don't own that many. Um, so I went on my notions and just looked up in the alphabetical order of all of my books that I own instead of trying to browse through my bookshelves. This was just a quick little way, a quick little way to find all the titles that begin with G. Um, most of them were like, like two or three of them were like uh, children's books, like children's picture books. And the other two were books that I have already read and so I wanted to read books that I haven't read yet. <laughs> and so the only other one um, that started with a G that I haven't read yet is God Breathes, It's a Little Hard to See, <laughs> um, by Josh McDowell, and it's The Undeniable Power and Reliability of Scripture. So this is a Christian apologetics book, um, and it is one that I wanted to get to. Um, at some point, but yes, it's not, it wasn't on my pile of possibilities list either, but I do love Josh McDowell's and his son, um, Sean McDowell's work in the apologetics world. And so I am excited to read this and I feel like, I hope it'll be an easy read because it feels very scholarly and just like the way it looks, just flipping through it. But I think it'll be interesting um, because it's just very, um, it's very factual and all of the evidence that points to the reliability of scripture and the canon that we have today. So 
Yes, that is God Breathed by Josh McDowell. Um, and the next one is that I thought was appropriate for October was Looking for Anne. And again, I'll put the cover here uh, because I don't have the dust jacket for this book. Um, but it is about how Ella, Ella Montgomery created the character of Anne. And because October is Anne's month, it's her favorite month, you know. <laughs> she says, I'm so glad I live in a world where there are Octobers. And I'm like, yes, me too. I've been loving the weather that's been happening now in October. It's, it's just perfect fall weather um, right now here in Colorado. But I thought this one was an appropriate one for October to read all about Anne and how Ella Montgomery um, created her and yeah I'm really excited to get into this one I also feel like it's gonna get a long read so it might be one that I read over the course of the whole month who knows if I'll actually complete it or not I don't know we will see maybe I'll find it interesting enough that I can read it in no time but again we shall see okay so then the next one is the one that I will be reading with my book club this month. Um, it is The Beekeeper of Aleppo by Christy Lefteri. Not sure. Um, I'm not even actually sure what this book is about. <laughs> um, it was just the pick of the month and so I um, just put it on hold at the library and I haven't even really looked at it at all. So I'm just going to read the syn synopsis or maybe just a bit of it because I don't actually really know what it's about. But here we go. Nuri is a beekeeper and Afra, his wife, is an artist. Mornings, Nuri, Nuri rises early to hear the call to prayer before driving to his hives in the countryside. On weekends, Afra sells her colorful landscape paintings at the open air market. They live a simple life, rich in family and friends in the hills of the beautiful Syrian, Syrian city of Aleppo until the unthinkable happens. When all they love is destroyed by war, Nuri knows they have no choice except to leave their home. But escaping Syria will be no easy task. Afra has lost her sight, leaving Nuri to navigate her grief as well as a perilous journey through Turkey and Greece toward an uncertain future in Britain. So I'm going to skip down to the bottom. Um, moving, intimate, and beautifully written, The Beekeeper of Aleppo is a book for our times, a novel that at once reminds us that the most peaceful and ordinary lives can be utterly upended in unimaginable ways and brings a journey in faraway lands close to home, never to be forgotten. So, yeah, like I said, I don't hardly know anything about it and just reading this little synopsis. I'm not sure what my feelings will be about it or if I'll enjoy it or not, but I... But yes, that is another one that I want to get to this month. And then the final one that is actually on my TBR is another reread, and it is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. Um, and I wanted to reread this, and I think I've mentioned this before in another video. I'm not sure which one and when it was, but Netflix is coming out with a mini series of this book in the beginning of November, like the first weekend in November. And I love this book so, so much. The first time I read it, I think I read it back in 2020. Um, I, and I just loved it. The writing and the, and the story and the characters and everything. Wow. It was a five star read then for me. And so I wanted to reread it before watching the miniseries. I was so excited when I saw that they were bringing, that they were making a miniseries because movies just don't cut it most times because obviously it's a movie and they can't put all of the little details into the movie um, from a book. But with miniseries you have a lot more room and space and time to put in very important details of a story. Um, and so the trailer looks incredible and I'm just I'm just really excited to watch it. So yes, I wanted to reread the book before watching the miniseries. I have no idea if it will be a five star book again this time around. I might have different thoughts on it. Um, and I have forgotten a lot of details about the story. But I think it'll be a quick read again because of the way that the chapters are set up. They're all really short, um, even though it's a thick book. But yes, we shall see if I still have the same thoughts and feelings about this book and love it as much as I did the first time I read it. Um, but anyway, there is that. Um, I guess also 
I will be finishing this book this month. The Moonlight Masquerade, a Regency Romance. Um, I started it in September and I'm just now barely over halfway through this book so that kind of tells you my thoughts on it. <laughs> it's like I'm enjoying it enough that I want to read it and finish the story but it's not pulling me in enough for me to just sit down and finish it. Like I'm only just reading a chapter at a time and I'm and I kind of get bored a little bit. I don't know if bored's the right word. I don't love the writing as much. And it is a historical romance and it's definitely heavier on the romance side of things. I thought it was going to be a little bit more of a mystery as well, but it's not. And sometimes I get a little bit annoyed at the characters because I'm like, it's so obvious what's happening and it's so obvious that this other person is who you think they are. Like, I don't know, I don't know how to, I'll give all of my final thoughts when I do a wrap up at the end of the month. At this point, it's just sitting at a three star book, like something that I enjoyed, like I enjoyed most of the, I enjoyed most of the story, but I just didn't love it. <sighs> I don't know, but we'll see. Maybe the ending will change my mind and bump the rating up a little bit. I don't know. I only have like 130 some pages left in the book. So we'll see how I feel about it. But anyway, that is my wrap up for September and what I hope to read in October. Let me know what you're most excited to read this month in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.